What's up, YouTube? It's Pete coming in hot with a daytime video on the potato. Still got the coffee in the daytime, just like I do at night. And today, what we're going to do is we made a video. Um, last video was towards the guys. Now, I got to give I got to give one to the ladies. We're going to talk about ghosting or a man losing interest in you. Why men ghost and lose interest in you. Um, and all that good stuff. And what the takeaway is for you as a woman when you're listening to this. Now, um, some of y'all hang out on the college campuses too much, so here's your obligatory trigger warning. If you can't handle the cold hard truth, then you should probably leave this video now. But if you're actually interested in learning about what men want and how you not providing men um, with what they want is why you're getting the results that you're getting, then keep watching. So, let's just cut right into it, okay? One of the first things, and I'm giving you free game here, ladies. One of the first things, this is probably going to be very obvious to you, and I wrote it down so that it's very easy for me to kind of stay on point here. You already know, ladies, that if a man is on a date with you, you can bet he wants to smash. You know this. I don't even have to tell you, but we talk about it all the time. What are the big four things men look for? Beauty, purity, femininity, and character. By virtue of him taking you out on a date, you can be assured, bare minimum, that you qualify for beauty. Unless you're catfishing him, which makes you a disingenuous asshole. Okay? So assuming you're not a disingenuous asshole, you qualify for beauty, he wants to smash. You know this. But you also have to understand that when a guy takes you out for dinner um, versus, you know, cold approach at a club or a bar or something like this, um, the context is different. So if you're dealing with an honest man who isn't going to use finessing and lying and things like that um, to get what he wants out of you, you understand that the club is a man's hunting ground for one night stands, while taking a girl out for dinner and things like this generally means that, yes, of course the man wants to smash, of course, but he is looking for something more than that. Now, that being said, ladies, you do have to be careful because there are a lot of men out here who do lie and women fall in love with what they hear, which is why men lie, just as men fall in love with what they see, which is why you have makeup, fake tits, and BBLs, okay? But um, the reason why most guys who are transparent and upfront understand that one night stand is club, and something more than that is dating, is once again because men can compartmentalize. They can separate sex from the emotion, and what that essentially means is, hey, if I'm looking for something a little more emotional, like I'm looking for a girl to emotionally invest in, probably going to take her out on a dinner date, things like this, versus the girl I'm just looking to smash, I'm going to cold approach at the club because the only thing that I'm looking for is to smash. And usually, if you're honest and upfront like that, a girl is going to be receptive to that because one of the most important things for a girl is not getting finessed. So the idea of you saying who you are as a man, women like that, and women, you can feel free to disagree with me if you want, but let's keep it a stack. Um, you do like guys who say what they mean and mean what they say. You don't like guys who lie to you and play you like a damn violin. You don't like it. Okay? Um, so, basically, yeah, we could separate the sex from the emotion. But unfortunately, some men will use a date as a pretext for sex, which is like the nice guy pretending to be nice to try to get something out of you. This is when women say, hey... You know, just because you take me on a date, I don't owe you my body, which is true, 100%. And guys that are only looking for the body, to be honest, you have no business taking a girl out on a date. What you should do is grow some balls and cold approach a girl at the club because that is the correct arena to be seeking out a one-night stand. And I'm sure most women would agree with that, okay? But uh, yeah, most men that are taking you out on a date, just understand that um, they are sizing you up just as you're sizing them up to determine if um, you are worth an emotional investment. Now, here's the thing. A woman's version of an emotional investment is different from a man's version of an emotional investment. And the reason why is because women cannot separate sex from emotion. So, for a woman, sex is her emotional investment. 
It is her emotional investment, which is why ghosting bothers her so damn much. But for a man, his emotional investment is separate from sex. Sex is just a biological need for a guy, okay? But the emotional investment, that's what gets the vasopressin pumping. That's what gets him all mate guarding and territorial and protective and things like this towards his woman, okay? But when you separate that out and just look at it from a one night stand perspective, no, men can separate. So a man basically, for him, emotional investment is like, yo, can I invest in a committed relationship with this woman? While for women, emotional investment is sex. So think about it. If an emotional investment for women is sex, you can kind of see and extrapolate why men have a problem with women who sleep around with other guys. Because it's basically you emotionally investing in other men. Which kind of, again, raises the question, how committed are you really to the relationship? How invested are you really? So, I know I just threw a lot at you there, but I wanted to preface that. So, it's abundantly clear men want sex. That's always going to be a component of it. And ladies, you almost instinctively know that. But just understand that most guys who are taking you on a date, they are screening for something more. But you also have to understand in this culture where on the men's side, we're going to hold them accountable and say, hey, you're using a date as a pretext to just get laid. You're basically BSing a girl, making her think it more than it is just to get sex. That's fucked up. And ladies, when you are using a man as a foodie call to get free food, hashtag third sucker this month, hashtag no poom poom for you, just understand that's fucked up too. It does not create goodwill between the two sexes. And as a result, here we are. Love it. Nobody trusts anybody. It's, it's fantastic. I love it. But let's keep going. So again, this whole emotional investment thing. The way women look at it, from as far as I can tell, is are you vibing? Is the vibe there? Basically, again, congruency test. Is the man who he says he is? And all this is basically passing through your head to determine if he is worth your emotional investment. Sex. This is true regardless of whether you're being approached in a club for a one night stand or whether you're being taken on a date for something more serious. Because regardless of the situation, your expression of emotional investment is sex. Whether it's a one night stand or um, a date, there is some sort of emotional investment on your part, which is why we tend to talk about why casual sex for women long term is just mm, not a good mating strategy and it's gonna bite you in the ass in the future. More on that later though. So with all this in mind, the heart of the question here is why did the guy ghost you? You understand what the man's intentions are when he's approaching you in a club versus taking you on a date, assuming that he is transparent, he's honest, he's upfront, he's not going to bullshit you. And that's what we tell men. Be upfront, don't bullshit, don't play some stupid beta game, don't play some game where you're saying one thing and doing another. Do not do this. Congruency at all times. We are huge proponents of that. So I'm sorry if you're dealing with um, you know, a fake dude who's using you and finessing you for sex. I mean, obviously, it's on you to be um, better at screening and vetting those guys. But just understand that um, you know, deceiving you and misleading you, uh, we don't do that here. And we hope in return that you do not do the same. That's how you build the goodwill and the trust. But at the core, why did the guy ghost you? I have three reasons that I can think of, and most men watching this will agree. I'm going to give you this information for free, when ladies watching the video, uh, because I really do want you to take it to heart. I want you to think about it, and I want you to reflect. Because a lot of girls are like, no, that's not it. That's not it. It's not that. It's not that. Yes, it is. We're men, and we're telling you this is what it is. Okay? So listen carefully. Number one, not giving him the sex. You're making him wait. So, again, as I just prefaced the beginning of this video, you know he wants it, okay? And a smart man knows that if you want it, you're going to emotionally invest in him, okay? There is the Giga Chad at the foam cannon party. He didn't have to take you out on a date. He got to basically get the milk for free without buying the cow. He knows this. He knows this. There was a genuine desire, an emotional response to Giga Chat at the foam cannon party that made you go, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give that guy my emotional investment. I'm gonna fuck him. You know that. And a smart man knows that as well. So if you're making a guy wait for five or six dates, again, 
he already knows genuine desire is not there. After five or six dates, you're probably at the point like, oh, I guess I'll give him some sex, right? Obligatory smash. Most guys do not want to be an obligatory smash, a pity smash, a beta smash. Men do not want this. I know women say all the time, I want to feel wanted. I want to feel desired. Basically, I want a man's emotional investment. Something we don't tell you is that we want to be desired too. And the way you communicate that to us, that we are desirable, is to give us your emotional investment and not make us fucking wait. But what about if he thinks I'm a whore, this, that, and the third? Listen, most guys that understand how this shit works are not going to think that. That's facts. Most men are actually going to be flattered by the fact that, that you want to you wanna bang him. Because he looks at it like, this girl must really like me. She must really like me if she wants to, if she wants to get, it, get it on with me like the first or second date. She must really like me. We built the rapport. We built the vibe. I passed her vibe test and she's like, yes, you can have my emotional investment. Let's hit up the hotel or whatever the fuck. Maybe go back to her place. You go back to your place, whatever it is. Okay? So ladies, just understand, he's ghosting you because if it's like five or six dates, you still haven't given him anything. Let's say you've been seeing each other for like, I don't know, two months, three months. You still haven't given him anything, okay? At that point, he's just looking at it like, well, I'm not wanted. I'll take it, uh, look, I always, I'm always honest, I'm up front, you know? And some of the girls watching are probably gonna laugh at me like, oh, geez, what a fucking prude. I've only banged two girls, and it was a long time ago. But both of them gave it up within a month. Within a month. Because those girls, on some level, genuinely desired me. And because they genuinely desired me, they weren't concerned about would I think she's a hoe or not. They weren't concerned about that. They were like, this man is attractive, he is worth emotionally investing in, and I'm going to give him this special um, experience. But again, this ties back to the other thing with the whole hookup culture. If you give that away to just anybody, then all of a sudden it loses value, right? Exactly. So that's a whole nother topic, though. So that's reason number one. You took too long, and that communicates to him that you don't really like him that much. Maybe you're just getting using him for foodie calls. Third sucker this month. Hashtag no boom boom. Meow yeah, meow. Second, offering nothing other than sex. Remember, when you go on the date, you already know you've passed the beauty test. You've passed. Of course, he wants to smash. You know it already, almost intuitively. But you have to understand, guy game is getting you to emotionally invest in him. Girl game is getting him to emotionally invest in you. The... the um, not culmination, the, um, the embodiment of this concept. There we go. The embodiment of this concept for a guy is getting a girl to sleep with him. That is how he demonstrates um, that he has game to some degree. Women being able to keep men after they've made their emotional investment is their demonstration of their game and how effective it is. And the truth of the matter is, we have a society where men are expected to have game and women are not. And then we wonder why these girls are getting ghosted by these men. And then they're saying all men are trash, including the men that are completely invisible to them anyway, which is hilarious. But that's, again, another talk. We can go off on a lot of tangents here. But let's continue with point two. Offering nothing other than sex. So as I said, beauty is important. But the three other things we always talk about. Purity. Femininity and character. What does this mean? It means you're not ratchet, you're not masculine, and you have a moral compass. And as a bonus, maybe we have some common interests. Maybe we both like video games. Maybe we both like movies or whatever. We have something we connect on that we can have an intellectually stimulating conversation. Okay? But the general gist, okay, is this. If you are the kind of girl that has emotionally invested in a bunch of Giga Chads and Tyrones at the foam cannon parties. You're out here having girls nights out, giving your body up to everyone, going on OnlyFans, which is basically sharing your emotional investment with the entire world. Again, just understand that's gonna make a man feel a certain way about it. 
So if you don't come to him correct with the traditional conservative modesty and all that stuff, he's probably not going to take you serious, okay? And he's realizing, hey, I'm either going to keep this girl in the rotation, um, just a, another girl to smash, or I'm just going to stop talking to you. Femininity is another one. Again, do I need a lifetime supply of ibuprofen to deal with you? That's fucked up, Peter, but it is what it is. I'm telling you off rip what men care about. This is what men care about, okay? They want women who are not ratchet. Women that have just had sex with like men that they are taking somewhat serious, like they're in relationships and stuff, like they basically only had sex with their boyfriends, that's a woman who takes relationships seriously. That's a woman who takes her emotional investment seriously and who she gives it to, she takes it seriously. Just as men should take their emotional investment seriously. And what I'm telling you is, we do. And because we do, if you don't measure up to what we want in order to qualify you for our emotional investment, we ghost you instead and don't give it to you, okay? So femininity, character, purity, these things are important, okay? Men like it when you're friendly. Men like it when you're feminine. Men like it when you compliment them and make them feel like you appreciate them and value them and care about them. Does this sound familiar? It sounds like the kind of stuff you want from a man too. Yeah, we want that too, okay? And that's reflected in your character. So just understand, if he ghosted you after you gave up the sex, this is why. So if he ghosts you before you give up the sex, it's because he thinks like, well, the genuine desire isn't there. I'm at risk of getting finessed. I gotta get the fuck out. If it's after you gave him the sex and he ghosts you, just understand he's looking at it like, can I really introduce this person to my family? Can I introduce this girl to my friends? Can I really integrate her into my life and fully emotionally commit and invest to this woman? And if you don't meet these qualifiers, he's going to conclude no. So as a woman, you need to be consciously aware of that. Look at how you're living your life right now and think like, would a guy, based on what Peter has told me here, would a guy want this? And if the answer is no, you might want to go back to the drawing board. If the answer is yes, you probably already have a boyfriend or you're already married and you got the ring. Congratulations, you're a winner. So that's the second reason a guy would ghost you. The third reason a guy would ghost you. Now this usually happens like, let's say like a first or second date, which is usually kind of the time window where he's expecting you to like emotionally invest and kind of show that you actually desire him versus him. You already know he desires you. Otherwise he wouldn't be on the date with you. If he still goes to, chances are you set off a red flag. Chances are you said some shit like, I have a lot of guy friends. You started spouting off some feminist propaganda. Um, you start talking about how you like to party and travel and all these things that would suggest you have a promiscuous past. Um, you're disrespectful to the server, the waiter, whatever. You have no character. Um, you're in your phone the whole time. We did, we did a whole video about the 25 red flags that I came up with. Um, and also got from other guys who also have been comparing notes um, and saying this. So we're all kind of saying the same thing here. Again, if you're setting off these red flags, feel free to check it out in the other video, the 25 red flags. Just understand um, that he might look at that and be like, well, now I don't even care if she gives me her emotional investment. I mean, listen, if she puts out at the end of the day, she puts out at the end of the day, like, okay, fine. But... I got enough. I got enough. And that's the third reason a guy's going to ghost you. So, here's the thing, ladies. You got two ways you can approach this. Just like, you know, we all have the same, you know, brain components. We have the frontal lobe, which is rational. We have the emotional part back here, mammalian brain, I feel. And we have our survival instinct, to, reptilian, to be safe. Human, mammalian, reptilian. Men tend to operate on the human. Women tend to operate on the mammalian. I feel, I think. I feel, I think. You have two ways you can approach this now that I've given you this information. The first way you can approach this information is, hey, let's think about this logically. This guy clearly doesn't like ratchet women. This guy clearly doesn't like masculine, strong, independent babes. And before you say he's intimidated, it has nothing to do with that. I'm masculine as a man. You're feminine as a woman. The very things that we have a natural affinity for is what makes us attractive to each other. So if the man is bringing his masculinity, you're not bringing your femininity, you're making it conditional to be feminine, you're making it conditional to be loyal, you're making it conditional to have a moral compass, 
the man's just gonna look at it like the juice isn't worth the squeeze. Facts. Like he just he's just not gonna do it. So you're logically looking at that like, well, how do I make myself more marketable to this market? Well, you have to consider these variables. Just as we tell men, hey, women like, yes, they like an attractive guy, of course. You know, a guy who dresses nice, he smells good, he takes care of himself. Like, from a sensory perspective, all five senses are, are going off when this girl interacts with this guy. She desires him. Comfort and security, of course, that's her reptilian brain. I have to feel safe around this man and protected. Of course, we talk about that all the time. Masculinity. The traits that we don't find attractive in you, you find attractive in us. So we understand, yes, be a man. Don't be a fucking little beta bitch. You're not going to like it. You're going to dry up and you're going to finesse him for food dates. And honestly, he deserves it because he's a fucking moron. But we don't encourage that behavior here. But we understand why it happens. We don't justify, but we can explain why it happens. And he needs to go and learn from that. The fourth thing is security. Of course, you want that emotional investment. You want that investment where he dedicates his commitment to you and you do the same for him through sexual exclusivity. And what makes him want to keep you around is the femininity and all that stuff. And in exchange, he gives you the security, financial, the lifestyle, all this stuff. He will give it to you if he feels the investment is worth it. And then, of course, you both have a moral compass. You share values and morals, interests, and things like this. Of course. You got to have something to talk about. So when you think of it like that, obviously everything I just listed about guys, what you look for in them, it's all obvious to you. You know that you want these things in guys. But then when a guy turns around and says, hey, I don't, I want these things from you, you call it sexist, you call it misogynistic, you, you say, hey, you know, you're fat phobic, um, you say that you're body shaming, you say that, you know, you're intimidated by my career. It has nothing to do with any of that. Just understand, we don't give a fuck about any of that. We don't care, okay? Do you have these traits, yes or no? It's that simple. But instead, you're very combative against it and you try to act like we, we don't want that. Like, I don't understand. <sighs> the point is this, though. Ladies, you got the information now. Use it to your advantage. You can keep operating on your I feel like, I feel like, I feel like, but just understand, you're going to keep getting ghosted and then you're going to keep pushing this men are, men are trash narrative. Kill all men, believe all women, this, that, and the third. And it's not working. It's not working, okay? So just to quickly recap, all right, ghosting and men losing interest, why does it happen? Um, well, preface it with the fact that, you know, giving the ladies um, the free game here, men want to smash off rip if they're taking you on a date. You know it. It's unspoken. But if he's taking you out on a date and he's honestly a congruent person who's transparent and he's not trying to like bullshit you under a pretext, um, you know, false pretenses and things like this. Understand that if a guy's taking you out on a date, it's probably because he's looking to emotionally invest, potentially, in you. And now he's taking you out on dates to vet you. You're taking him out on dates to see if you vibe with him and all this stuff. That's all here. Sex is your emotional investment because you, can, you cannot separate sex from emotion. They're one for you. So that's your expression of desire and investment emotionally. While for a man, his commitment is his expression. He can separate the commitment from the sex. So the commitment of his energies, his, his resources, his emotions, all of that is his investment, okay? The stability that brings to your life. And at the end of the day, why does he ghost you? He ghosts you either because you're not giving it up, you're taking too long, because here's the thing, if you genuinely desire a man, you're going to emotionally invest as a woman. You're going to. We see it all the time with these one-night stands, all the time, okay? So if you're making a guy wait five or six dates, there's no way he can ha-ha his way into that boom boom. He knows what time it is if he's not a dumbass, if he's not a little beta bitch who's desperate and has a scarcity mindset. If he's a real man, he knows that if you desire him, you're going to emotionally invest in him. And if you're not, no good. Ghost. He's going to move on to the next girl. So ladies... Thinking this like, oh my God, if I give it up too fast, he's going to think I'm a hoe. This works against you. Do not do it. It's going to work against you and it is not going to serve you well. Um, so if you genuinely desire a guy and you're already kind of in the dating, like you're actually at a dinner, there's a pretext here where he's looking to emotionally invest. The vibe that kind of shows he's congruent is there and all that. Do not be afraid to emotionally invest in that guy. And if you do bring all the other things on top of that, then the second reason why he ghosts will not happen, which is you offering nothing else in 
on top of that, the things that qualify you for emotional investment, which are purity, femininity, and character. If you don't bring those things to the table, yeah, of course, he's probably going to ghost um, after he's um, kind of messed with you a little bit and realized, like, well, this isn't really going anywhere, and then he, and then he leaves. He has to find someone else to emotionally invest in um, because you ain't it. So that's the secondary reason. But if you do have all these other things, then you have nothing to worry about. And I think a reason why a lot of women withhold the sex, especially from these betas that they don't respect, is because deep down they know that these betas are security for them. And um, they know that once they give up that sex, the bargaining chips are gone because they never had to bring anything else to the table. They were never held accountable by these betas. And then they meet a real man that's actually going to hold them accountable and they're like, oh, shit. But a lot of times, instead of taking accountability, they just say all men are trash. Basically, what they're really saying is the top 20% of men are trash. And um, the bottom 80% of guys are just sitting here like, you did this to yourself. Like, what are you talking about? You friend zoned all of us. Like, what? What What are you talking about? Or basically, him not being top 20%, he inadvertently friend zoned himself. However you want to put it, the point is they don't get the tingles going, Okay. So that's the second reason the guy goes to you. And the third reason is the red flags. I mean, if you're saying dumb shit on the date, he's like, yo, this girl is stupid. You know, you're saying, you know, disrespectful things to the servers and this like that. Hey, if, if she's disrespectful to these people, she's probably disrespectful to her family who she's really comfortable with, which means she's probably going to be disrespectful with me. Or, you know, oh, hey, you know, she's, she's clearly talking about how she likes to party and travel and things like that. That to me smell, spells promiscuity. I could smell that promiscuity a mile away when you're giving those signs of someone who's kind of been around. So obviously your emotional investment is not something that you value very highly because you're giving it away like candy. So if you're giving it away to 50 plus dudes, why are you expecting me to buy the cow when you gave the milk away for free? Why are you expecting that? That is a stupid delusional expectation to have. Value your emotional investment because if you don't value your emotional investment as your behavior reflects, I am not going to value your emotional investment. Just as a man who simps, that is a man who gives away his emotional investment for nothing to a bunch of girls. And how do the girls respond to simps? They treat them like trash. Why? Because a man who does not value his emotional investment is not going to be valued by the girls either. Do you see what I'm getting at? And of course, you know, the whole boss babe, I'm strong and independent, I got a PhD, blah, blah, blah. But AKA, the things men don't give a shit about. Keep it a stack. If a man is successful and he's not a bum, he doesn't care about this stuff. He's not looking to milk money out of you. He's not looking to milk security out of you. That's not what he's looking to do. So using the male metric of success to demonstrate your own value, it's not going to work. You might as well just become a lesbian at that point and be the masculine girl in that relationship. And it is what it is. That's pretty much all I got. So ladies, I hope this was helpful. Again, I know it was tough love. I know it hurt. Believe me, I know it hurt. But you know what? I really want what's best for all of y'all out here. I want to help. I want to help the sisters out. So to help the sisters out, I just need y'all to understand this so that you can uh, make the necessary corrections. You don't have to go talking to guys about it. You don't have to fucking do anything. Just make the mental notes in your head. You don't have to argue. Just make the corrections for your own benefit, and then go enjoy the benefits of just being more marketable to men. It's going to work out better for you, and you're going to have an easier time um, getting into committed relationships where a man actually takes you serious if you take these things seriously. But um, yeah, feel free to leave a like, leave a dislike, call me an asshole, whatever you do, don't report the video. This is useful information. It will help you, I promise. And I guess I'll see y'all for the next one. Later.